Hey, very strong wind blew. <laughs> Listen to this. All right. Blew until it caused the mountains to fall apart. Large rocks to break in front of. Tore down the, more, the, the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before. The Lord, but listen to this, but the Lord was not in the wind. All right. So sometimes those winds may come. The Lord may not have been in the wind, but he was part of the wind. All right. So as we're going through our troubles and going through our things, just let, us, let you know that the Lord is in the wind. All right. He may have caused the wind, but he was with the wind. All right. Come on now. Sing, sing.
time yet. Don't talk time yet. I'll stop praying. I'll stop praying. I'm ready. Mm. I'm cheating. I'm not cheating. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have already done for us thus far, Heavenly Father. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for opening up your spirit, opening thank up your eyes, oh, Heavenly thank Father, on us, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you for pouring out your spirit on us, oh God. Thank you for opening up our hearts, opening up our spirits and our vessels, oh Heavenly Father. As I stand in front of your people today, oh Heavenly Father, I ask that you empty me totally out, oh Heavenly God. And just fill me up with your presence, with your word, and with your spirit. And let your words be heard and felt. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've done and all the things that you have made possible. Your daughter said, in Jesus' name we pray and say amen. Amen. A hot 20 minutes. Hot 20. Woo! Hot 20. Pastor said, three of y'all going up. Y'all got 20 minutes of peace. You got to make it a two-parter. I said, oh, God. 20 minutes. All right, here we go. We're going to start 1 Kings chapter 19. We're going to start at verse 1. As you get ready to turn, the name of today's message is going through hell to prepare you for heaven. All right. All right. All right. Going through hell to prepare you for heaven as we start 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. All right. I'm just going to read verse 1 and 3, and then we're going to walk it, all, walk it out. All right. And the word of God reads, King Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how Elijah had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, May the gods punish me terribly, deal severely with me, and worse, do to me and even more if by this time tomorrow I don't kill you. Oh, wow. Just as you killed those prophets, make your life like the life of one of them. My God. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life, mm. taking his servant with him. And when they came to yes, Beersheba in Judah, Elijah left his servant there. You may be seated. All right. The name of part one is progressive journeys. Progressive journeys. With journeys in life, we have journeys in our life right now. But in each journey, in each one of our lives, we have subplots. Just like a movie, you have a plot, right? You have the main plot, but then it starts to give you subplots like TV shows. Just like in your life. You have kids, you have families, you have marriages. But then you have your own life. You have a work life, you have a spiritual life, you have other right. different plots in your life. Right. And so... As we go through our lives, it's always going to be progressions in our journeys. All right. And you see, in some of our journeys, we need to make, and we can't get through unless it's with ourselves and God. Right. Okay, you see, in the beginning of this, you know, Elijah had already, he had killed some people, he killed some prophets. Mm. All right, and at this point in time, he should be at a high place. But he gets this message from Jezebel. All right. Jezebel is the queen of Ahab. And see, what's, and they were all doing all this uh, idolatry, all this worship and everything. And so he was like, we can't be doing that. So I'm going to kill all your prophets. And so, uh, and got me 20 minutes. <laughs> two parts, though. It's two parts, right? All right, let's jump to verse 4. We're going to jump to verse 4. Then we're going to start from there. It says, then Elijah walked for a whole day into the desert. Wow. Into a wilderness. And he sat down up under a bush, it was a juniper tree, and asked to die. He said, I have had enough, Lord, he prayed. Let me die. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors, my fathers, that is. Say, he is as good as dead as they already are. Right. Then he lay down under the tree and he slept. Oh, he lay down up under the tree. He got scared. So he ran for a little bit. Then he got to a tree after he ran so much, he got a little tired. All right. But you know, in our journeys, we may run from our problems for a little bit. But then it comes a point in time in our life, we have to sit down for a second. Right. We get tired of running. Right. Right. You right. ever get tired of running from your problems? No doubt. Your right. No doubt. And so Elijah, he got tired. Yes. But as he got tired, something happened. He fell asleep. Right. Do you get sleepy when you get tired? Yeah. You see, when he, got, when he got tired, he got up under this tree, got a little shade over him. And, see, and, then, and then when he did that, the Lord said something to him. He said, when he slept, suddenly an angel came to him and touched him. He told him to get up and eat, the angel said. So he got up and he ate. All right. Sometimes we get famished. Sometimes our spiritual being gets a little weak. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God got to come and nudge you for a little right. bit. All say, right. Get up. I need you to eat. 
Not only fleshly stuff, I need you to eat some spiritual stuff too. Yes, sir. You see, and when, and when, and when the Lord told him to get up, he says, Elijah saw near his head a loaf of baked uh, bread over coals. These were hot coals. Mm. All right. When was the last time the Lord woke you up and you got some hot coals right next to your bed? Mm. He, he got something hot for you to eat, hot for you to serve on, to get on, to get in your spirit, to get moving. All right. He said, no, joy of water because you can't eat without getting something to drink. No, I, I, I'm going to give you something to drink. I ain't going to let you go thirsty. Right. Come on now. He said, so he ate and he drank. Then he went back to sleep. Oh, he got a little full. He got a little itis in. Hey, man, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. He, he, he got a little comfy when he fell back to sleep. This is all happening in the wilderness now. All right. This is all happening. In the Sometimes we just get that we just want to throw in the towel. All right. All right. You know, when you get hungry after work, sometimes you get a little hangry, right? Mm. <laughs> see, see, Elijah didn't get hangry at this time. He got a little angry. He got a little leery. He got a little, little lazy at, at this time. All right, and so then what happens is the Lord said, you know what? Then the Lord, the, verse 7, said the Lord's angel messenger came to him a second time. All right. And the angel touched him and said, get up and eat. Mm. If you don't, the journey will be too, too hard and much for you. See, sometimes in our journeys, the Lord has to come and give us and give us an extra nudge because if we don't get what we need at that time, our journeys will be too long. Right. Right. It'll be too hard for us. Right. So we got to get that nurse. We got to get that spirit. We got to get that life. We got to get that bread. We got to get that water. Mm. How much time I got? Ooh, don't worry on. about it. Don't worry about it. 14 <sighs> you can have some of mine. Go ahead. See, without the proper nourishment, right. without the proper spiritual nourishment, it's going to be too hard for us to get going. All right. Right. It's going to be too hard for us to keep going on. Verse 8. Yes, sir. Verse 8 says, And what's the name of the sermon? Going through, going through hell to get to heaven. Going through hell to get to heaven. Preparing us for heaven. Right. Because right now, Elijah done went through some hell, y'all. Right. Elijah's running through his life. How much hell have we went through, y'all? Right. Too much. We, do, we go through hell every day. Yes, I'm saying hell in the church house. Yes, I am, because we go through it. Right. This life. Right. Come on, preacher. Says, oh, verse 8. So Elijah got up and he ate and he drank. The food made him strong enough to walk for 40 days and nights to Mount Sinai. Mm. Oh, so he done got some, he done, he done got some nourishment. He done got some spiritual nourishment. And we got our spiritual nourishment today, y'all. All right. And we've been living our life and getting our spiritual nourishment so we can make that long journey. So we, when we get in the middle of our journey, we don't get too, too weak and say, oh, I just can't make it, God. Right. All right. I just can't make it. You got to be able to make it. Because if you don't make it through your journey, we won't be able to make it to our destiny. Come on. He said, so Elijah got up and he drank. The food had made him strong enough to walk for 40 days and nights in Mount Sinai. Wow. The mountain of God. There Elijah went into a cave and stayed all night. Oh, my God. The cave. The cave. Sometimes the cave looked like a safe, a safe All place right. to cave. All right. All so right. you go into a cave, the cave at nighttime is a nice warm place in the winter. And in the summertime, it's a nice cool place in the summer. But you know what? Both times inside of a cave, it gets dark. All right. It gets damp. All right. It gets humid. It makes you want to feel a little comfortable. But do you know what? That, that what survives in caves? Uh-oh. In caves, you got all types of stuff. You got frogs. Some people in here are afraid of frogs. You got rats. Some people in here are afraid of rats. My God. You got bats. You got cats. You got bears. And then you got snakes. Mm. Woo! Because you know snakes, when snakes see you, boy, they can see you in the dark because they don't use their vision. They use their tongue. Mm. They use that fear on you. They smell it. So inside your cave where you think you're in a safe place, in a safe habitation, the devil is always going to be there in your dark place. All right. All right. So you can't get comfortable in your cave. All right. My God. It's not safe. You may think it's all right, but it's not safe. Then the Lord spoke his words to him, to Elijah. He said, why? Why are you here? What are you doing in this place? Mm. All right. As the Lord came to you, say, why are you in this place? What are you doing in this place of darkness? What are you doing in this place of no light? What are you doing here, my son? What are you doing here, my daughter? Why are you in a place that's not made for you? All right. All right. He says, then the Lord spoke his words. Then Elijah's going to answer. 
He says, he answered, Lord God, all powerful of heaven's armies and hosts. I have always served you as well as I could. Been very zealous for you. But the people, the what? The people, sons, children of Israel have broken, abandoned, forsake their agreement and covenant and solemn pact with you. Destroyed, tore down altars and killed your prophets and swords with swords. I am the only prophet alone am I left. And now they are trying to kill me, seeking my life too. All right. See, there are parts of our journeys when the Lord has to almost shake you back to life. Right, God. Sometimes we get down. Sometimes we get in our rooms. Sometimes we go in the bathroom and we may cry. Sometimes on our way to work, we may cry. We don't want our family to see us. Sometimes when we're in the bathroom at work, we're like, Dad, never. Why am I in this job? Mm. I'm not happy. Mm. But the Lord has to come and touch you sometimes. Say, wake up. I got somewhere for you to go. I got people for you to touch. I got All things right. for you to see and experience. Verse 11 says, Come on. The Lord said to Elijah, Come stand in front of, before me on the mountain, and I will pass by you. For the Lord is about to pass by. Then a very strong wind blew. <laughs> Listen to this. All right. Blew until it caused the mountains to fall apart. Large rocks to break in front of, tore down the, more, the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But listen to this, but the Lord was not in the wind. All right. So sometimes those winds may come. The Lord may not have been in the wind, but he was part of the wind. All right. So as we're going through our troubles and going through our just let, us, let you know that the Lord is in the wind. All right. He may have caused the wind, but he was with the wind. All right. Come on now. See, see, we're going to break that down just a minute because we got two parts. I'm still on part one. All right. See, because the wind is the breath. Mm. The wind is the spirit. All right. Sometimes the Lord just got to blow his spirit back up on you for you to get up out of your rut. Right. Mm. Sometimes he just has to blow you back into a place. Just like a balloon. If you let the air out of the balloon, all you got to do is you put your lips back around and blow it back up. That's what the Lord did. When well, you fail to deflate, when well, you don't fail to deflate, the Lord just said, Right. Blow back up, my son, because my spirit is within you. All right. Come on now. This is after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Oh, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. But the Lord moves some stuff around you right away. Right. He moves some stuff out of the way. Right. He moves some stuff to the left. He moves some stuff to the right. And he made your feet shake a little bit. Because you say, you're standing too long. Right. You're standing too long. I need you to walk. I need you to run. All you're right. standing too long. Right. That quake in your life. It's just a little shaking and waking up. Then verse 12 says, after the earthquake, there was a fire. My God. But the Lord was not in the fire. Oh, but there was a fire. The Lord had to make it move. He had to heat up some stuff in your life. All right. He had to make it hot. He had to make it uncomfortable. How many of y'all like these July days and these August days in Texas? How often do you run from your car to your house and where you're trying to get to? Because it's just too hot. My God. Because it's just too hot. The fire. See, he was not in the wind, but the spirit caused it. He was not in the earthquake, but his presence caused it. He was not in the fire, but his glory caused it. All right. All right. Come on now. In our journeys, the winds may come and the quakes may come, but the fires may be hot. But God will always show up afterwards. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. We're going. After the fire, there was a quiet. And gentle sound. All right. The sound of a gentle whisper mm. blowing wind, a brief sound of silence, a still small voice. Then, when Elijah heard it, he covered his face and his coat. He covered his face with his coat and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. See, because after all that stuff, the Lord wasn't there, but he was getting ready to talk to Elijah. All right. He said, I need you to come on out, come out of that dark place. Come out so you can see the light that's out here. Mm -hmm. Come out. So in your dark places, in our dark places, come out of those things. Right. Don't stay in those things. Don't get comfortable in those things. Come out. When the Lord starts speaking to you, listen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Listen. Says so then the voice came in Elijah said, Why are you here? Why are we there, y'all? My God. Why are we in those places? Come on. Why? 
And listen to verse 14. It's going to resemble another verse he just got through saying. He said, he answered, Lord God, all powerful. Kind of sound familiar, darling. Yeah. He says, of heaven's armies of hosts, I have always served you as well as I could, but been very zealous for you. But the people, the sons and children of Israel have broken. He's repeating himself. He said, this is why I'm here. He says, they've abandoned you, forsaken you. They've messed up the agreement, the covenant, the treaty with you. They destroyed your altars and killed your prophets with swords. I am the only prophet alone I am. Mm. I'm left. And All now right. they are trying to kill me to seek my life. Mm. Sometimes we repeat ourselves, but the Lord wants you to hear what you're saying to yourself. My God. I need you to say it out loud. Why do you think you're here? Mm. Say it so you can conquer it. All right. Say it so you can conquer it as I get ready to finish up. In verse 15, then we're going to have to do part two next time. It says, the Lord said to him, go back on the road that leads to the desert, the wilderness around Damascus. He said, go back to the road. The stuff that you have ran from, uh -oh. all that stuff you have ran from, I need you to go back to it. Because I got something for you to do to it. All I got right. something for you to conquer through it. I got I need you to, oh. <laughs> I need people to see through you what I can do. Yes, all sir. All right. All right. Glory to God. Because on our journeys, the Lord won't let us be alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. In part two, we're going to find out, yeah, you may struggle, but the Lord will be with you. Yeah. And he will give someone to help you along. Because through your stuff, somebody else can be learning through your hell. Mm. My God. Because our hell will help us prepare for our heaven. Amen. 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 Father, thank you for everything that you have done. All the things that you have made possible. Thank you for your word. And thank you. Just let us learn from what you've already given out, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. 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 amen.